Now I'd like to introduce the ontology working group. Uh, Jim Campbell, are you on? And you should be seeing our screen. Yes. Um, good morning. My name is Jim Campbell. I'm a physician informaticist at the University of Nebraska. Um, and I've the agenda for this hour uh, will be a brief report of our the uh, challenge of I2B2 terminal ontology deployment uh, for COVID. Um, I am going to follow up with um, a discussion of uh, COVID terminology uh, deployment uh, for ONC national standards. Um, and Michelle Morris of the will follow up uh, discussing um, the ACT Network's uh, response to the same. Uh, finally, depending upon time available, we'll discuss a little bit about workgroup activity planning for the coming year. Um, I have uh, note that we've got um, about uh, 20 uh, individuals who have attended at least one meeting um, and have contributed to our discussions. Um, we've had uh, nine telecom meetings in the past 12 months. Um, we started off the year with uh, work groups uh, developing ontology web pages for um, um, the, the work group. Um, unfortunately, uh, membership and uh, contributed time um, uh, diminished and- Jim, it sounds like you're breaking up a bit. It's, it sounds like your audio is having some, some difficulties. And I'm not sure what I can do about that. Um, should I speak more slowly? Um, if you have other programs open, you might want to close those. Um, I already than, have. Okay. We'll just keep going and we'll, try, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, at any rate, we have abandoned our ontology webpage uh, publication. Um, we entered into negotiations with the AMA about the use of CPT4 for I2B2 sites. We um, abandoned that. Um, we did some formative work on the Ontology Tools Wiki um, and um, I'll publish the uh, website um, at the end of the uh, talk um, and uh, you can take a peek at that. Um, we came to recognize that we've got two distinct uh, user groups within our um, group of interest. Um, on the one hand, we've got entrepreneurial developers of um, ontologies which um, they consider to be very important for their site, including things such as the sequence ontology, ICD-03, um, molecular genomics and organisms. Um, and uh, we are doing our best to um, support these individuals when uh, these projects arise. But um, I think a slightly larger group is uh, more interested in seeing that we get uh, support across the I2B2 community uh, for standard ontologies that everybody is likely to have deployed in their electronic health record. Uh, those core ontologies include ICD-10-CM, 10-PCS, CPT-4, SNOMED CT, um, all of LabLoink for the U.S. domain, um, clinical link limited to vital signs and a few other items, and of course, RxNorm medications. Um, Michelle is going to pick up at the end of the session and talk about workgroup planning. Um, I'm going to uh, paste uh, my email into the chat window um, when I finish. Um, along with this Google Doc, which can be used for comments that you want to forward to uh, the ontology work group. Uh, Michelle will be introducing a more formal um, um, uh, query that uh, we would like to uh, gather interest um, from everyone. With that, um, I'd like to turn the uh, presentation over to Matvi Palchuk.
um, who is going to go ahead with our next presentation. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I see the I see the attendance is uh, really up. Ninety ninety folks on the call. Zoom is reporting. That's that's fantastic. Um, so I uh, didn't really have much to say in addition to what was already discussed yesterday, as far as trinetics response and uh, the ontology angle. Um, you know, we discussed we discussed uh, all the all the new codes that that were being released for COVID nineteen are still being released, and the, the importance of updating everybody's uh, various uh, interface and reference terminologies, starting from the electronic medical record system to your data warehouses, research repositories, common data models, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What I did want to do, and uh, if if this is if this is something that's that's not of interest, please feel free to to speak up. But what I wanted to do is uh, go over what an ontology looks like, and what it will take to um, actually go ahead and add a couple of concepts to your ontology. Um, actually, do you want to share your screen? Yeah. <clears throat> so this is this is something this is something that might seem to be kind of technical and in the weeds. Uh, a bunch of folks on this call, I'm sure, are perfectly comfortable with this, and uh, this this would be this would be kind of a snooze of of a presentation. But there are folks who might uh, who might not have sort of peeked under the hood, and my my goal is to show you that this is not scary. It's actually pretty easy. And once you know the basics, you can easily go in and make these changes. And I2B2 uh, I2 is beautiful in the sense that uh, it's actually really, really flexible. If you make a change in the ontology, you can immediately start loading the data and take advantage of it. So uh, I wanted to start. So I have, I have this, uh, this, is, this is Oracle developer, the database is Oracle, but these things, you know, all pretty much look the same and pretty much act the same with few differences. So I have this really old I2B2 database goes back God knows how long. And uh, some of the stuff we've been playing with uh, in Trinetics, some of the stuff obviously was sort of seeded from demo I2B2 content. So you want to start with this table called I2B2. It might be different in your system. Uh, this one is truly old. We're talking about 2007 can't even count that far back. Uh, but this is what the ontology table looks like. This table is what drives the upper left corner in the I2B2 web client, in Shrine web client. These are sort of the building blocks of your query. You have to have these concepts that you are interested in including in your query. So for example, a diagnosis of COVID-19, a lab test for viral RNA, etc. You want to have these concepts here. Uh, and obviously, if your if your ontology dates back to 2007, they're not going to be here. But it is really easy to include. So, what I did was to say, export this table. I didn't want the DLL. I wanted a CSV file. You go through the steps. I'm not going to do them now, but you go through the steps, and uh, what you will get downloaded is going to be something like this. Uh, again, let me, let me repeat, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, I'm not looking at the question. We have a question um, from Keith Elliston. Um, the I2B2 and ACT ontologies are very US centric. What is being done to support the internationally used medical terminologies and to develop an ontology that would enable better integration of data from multiple countries? That's a fantastic question. Thank you, Keith. Um, so Trinetics is global. We have data flowing in from uh, multiple countries. I mentioned the number 26 yesterday. It is not a trivial challenge. So to very quickly give you some flavor, when it comes to demographics, for example, race and ethnicity, as US folks are familiar with it, the five races, the two ethnicities, is a very US-centric concept. 
uh, when we ask these questions, well, when we, we used to ask these questions in European countries, we were getting such funny looks that we kind of stopped asking. Um, so it's an unsolved problem right now. How do you represent the races and ethnicities globally? So what about Aboriginal uh, folks in Australia? You know, what about uh, Caribbean countries and how the UK uh, sort of uh, explains and, and uh, categorizes them? It's, it's not really compatible and there is no global standard. Diagnoses, we're much better off, uh, WHO, much as we like to vilify them, did a very good job of essentially getting ICD globally adopted. Uh, of course, we all managed to create our own flavors. There is the CM, American flavor. There is, there is a German flavor. There is an Australian flavor. There are different flavors. There are countries that don't use flavors and use WHO version. But, uh, it, you know, nonetheless, you can map them to one another. Trinetics standardized on ICD-10 CM and we're mapping uh, those flavors uh, that are not CM to it and that works. Procedures is a wild wild west. Every country has their own procedures and because these are mainly used for reimbursement purposes you can imagine that different healthcare delivery systems behave very differently uh, and so it remains a challenge. We're thinking about SNOMED procedures as the ultimate single standard, but uh, what's in the way are things like ICD-10 PCS in the States, Belgium, Spain, other countries, which is a really tough standard to, to, to work with and to map to or to map from, and things like uh, uh, CPT that Jim already mentioned a little earlier. So I don't want to take all this time, but uh, there's a lot of work being done. I'll be happy to chat about it offline but it is not trivial, not trivial at all. Thanks, thanks Keith for the question. Um, so uh, this, is, this is not quite the, the table I want to show. This is what you will end up with. So the download, the download of I2B2 demo ontology will basically look like this. Again, a little scary, but let me give you a very quick overview here. The most important column that you want to pay attention to is called C full name. This is the one that like really sort of everything hangs off of. The first thing you want to do is you actually want to ask Excel to sort this file by C full name because if you get it sorted, it will start making a lot of sense. Uh, these guys here, the ones that begin with letter R, they're modifiers, we will ignore them. For now, we'll start here. First column, actually I'll freeze the panes. And uh, whoever, whoever is moderating, let me know uh, if you don't mind the time so we don't end up in yesterday's situation. Well, um, so this is the root. The root is called I2B2. Just, you know, that's the convention. It doesn't have to be, but uh, that's what, where the root is. Find the root and then look at the structure of the paths. Uh, maybe we go to some other in fact, probably a good way to do it is to impose a filter and look for, let's say, the word diagnosis. Right. So we'll start. We'll start looking at at the diagnoses. Here we go. So the back slashes indicate folders. So think of it as a bunch of nested folders. I to B two is root. Diagnosis is a folder within that. Circulatory system, open parenthesis 390, blah, 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 is a folder inside of that. Inside of circulatory is a folder, diseases of capillaries, and so on. And so every concept is represented as these folders. There are two basic kinds of concepts. There are folders and there are leaves. So these guys, the ones that begin with letter F under visual attribute, those are folders. So diagnosis is a folder. Circulatory system is a folder, etc. Things that have an L, they are leaves. They are terminal nodes of this hierarchy. Um, it's kind of blown out because we have synonyms here. If you ignore the, the ones with the letter Y, it will, it will look a little better. But 
so the, the, the important the important things to know about this table is if you want to add content you want to make sure that you have this path the path that identifies the concept that you want to add you want to give it a name it lives in the following uh, column called C name uh, you want to say whether it's a folder or a leaf the second letter a stands for active so you keep them active if you want to hide them you change it to an H there's actually a third letter, but we will skip that for now. Uh, another interesting column is C base code. This one has the actual code for this concept. Guess what? It's optional. You don't have to have to put it in here. It will work if you don't. And then the rest of the columns, you kind of copy and paste from, from uh, a sample that, that's in front of you, from, let's say, a demo ontology. Um, obviously, skipping a lot of, a lot of nuances. So if you know how dim codes function, you know, congratulations, you're better off than, than I am. But for now, you can just uh, make sure that dim code is exactly the same as the full path and, and you're fine. Um, set the dates in the same format as, uh, as in the original and thing, things will just look, look peachy and dandy. So it's not, it's not that hard. So what I, what I suggest you do is Grab the top line, grab, you know, grab the, uh, the folder names, start your own little, um, start your own little CSV file, you know, paste those guys in. And this one is, is the one I constructed actually shared with a couple of Trinetics members who were looking to update their I2B2 terminology. Uh, really, really sort of basic back of the envelope sketching type of stuff. So, Let's let's look at an example. So here I wanted to add u07.1. So what I ended up doing is I added five lines. They look like this, and let's let's just go through them real quick. So you now will see they're they're looking really familiar. Uh, see full name, the path. I wanted to make sure I have a folder, the outer folder, to keep those u diagnoses. You don't have to. If you skip all of this stuff and just create this one, it'll end up on the root level and that's okay. But it, this, this way it looks good and you know, it's not very much work. So you make a folder uh, with the uh, U codes and you know, just Google a little bit, They're easy enough to find. I uh, call it codes for special purposes, call it anything you like. Uh, you make a folder inside of that that goes from zero to 49, call it the uh, provisional assignment of God knows what. And, and so on, and then you arrive at, at the one that you actually want to add, u07.1, you make it a leaf, so the, the web client knows to render it, not as a little folder icon, but as a little page icon. Uh, and then again, you kind of set the rest, you, you know, you can fill out C-base code, although again, not strictly necessary. Uh, make, you know, say that they're not synonyms, and then the rest of the columns, carefully fill out the same way as other diagnosis in your ontology. Again, keeping DIM code the same as C full name. Uh, in fact, it's probably, oh, I usually just put in a formula, you know, like this equals to uh, whatever the cell is B3, and that, that does the trick, right? And, uh, and then you upload, you upload these lines, you go back to your SQL developer and you say you want to make changes and you, yeah, and you upload them and you commit the changes and you reload your web client and you will see the stuff there. Uh, it will give you an error if you make a mistake, but chances are it's simple enough, it will just work. The next thing you need to know is this. Codes are really important. When you're going to be loading actual data into observation fact table, this is what's going to go in. You're going to have patients with U07.1. And you remember I said that this is kind of optional. So there's another very important table in I2B2 that needs to link this path in the ontology to this code. And that table is called concept dimension. Um, Oops, I just downloaded and it looks pretty much like this. Um, wait, did it download? 
that's okay, doesn't doesn't have to, we can look at it online. Concept dimension, this is what it looks like. So the uh, the important things, the important things in this table, see if we can get past the demographics so it looks a little more, a little easier to understand. <clears throat> oh my. This is me, this is me scrolling. Um, maybe we're gonna abandon the scrolling idea. Um, so. Lower class. Two, yeah, two important, two important fields here. Concept path. Now, ITB2 doesn't want to make it very easy for you. So concept path. Couple minutes, Malfi. Sorry? Couple minutes? Yes, that's perfect. Concept path is the same as Sifu name. You just kind of have to know this. Uh, it's a quirk. It's an endearing quirk. We love it. Uh, you'll learn to love it too. Sifu name, just look at the, con you know, the, this, the structure, what's in this column. It's the same as concept path. Put your new concept path here. This one is called concept CD. Don't get confused that in this table, in the ontology, we refer to it as C-based code. They are one and the same. It's just, you know, one, you know, two sides of the same coin. So C-based code is the same as concept CD. Concept CD should be familiar because this is the convention that's used in the observation fact table. So the, the payload of concept dimension table is a link between a path and a code. And obviously from here, it's now easy to understand. The way I2B2 works is in the web client, when you drag something into the query builder, you're dragging a path from here, from the ontology. I2B2 then looks it up here in the concept dimension table, links it to the appropriate concept CD code, and then goes into observation fact table where your data is, looks that up and counts how many patients have that code. That's it. That's as simple, as simple and, and as, as beautiful a design as, as, as it is. So going back to, to this little toy sample that we put together, this is, this is adding U07.1. These are adding a couple of new procedures. You see there are some CPTs and some HICPICs that are used for reimbursement of COVID-19 testing. And this chunk is adding all of the lowing pre-release, so at least back, back to when I constructed it, there are probably a few more now. Um, the way you construct the paths is not really important, just as long as it's consistent and uh, follows this convention. You go from the root, backslashes represent individual levels. Uh, it's really easy to understand once you open an existing ontology and kind of stare at it for five minutes. So that's, that's where, that's I think where I will stop. Um, I, I did want to throw on the screen my, my uh, contact information. You don't have to be a member of Trimedics. Reach out Matthew, if you have any questions. Yes, please. Matthew, you might want to put that in the chat window so everybody can grab it that wants it. I will do so. Um, Please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can reach out to any member of the ontology working group. Uh, this, this is truly easy and obviously, you know, to state the obvious, it is really, really important and it's worth doing, you know, it's worth taking half an hour to, to do on your system to make sure that uh, you are up to date and are capable of loading this data and taking advantage of it. And, you know, obviously again, uh, applies to anything else. You want to add some vital signs. You want to add, I don't know, results of the blood gas, uh, information on, on ICU stay, et cetera. It, it is truly not difficult and is worthwhile learning how to do and do. And on that, I will uh, surrender the microphone. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Jim, who is next? Michelle or? 
I think it's Jim. Sorry, I'm struggling to get the audio back. <laughs> Are you seeing my screen okay? No. We don't see your screen, Jim. Ah, there we go. Okay. Apologize. How's that? Good. Speak slowly because your voice is breaking up again. Are you seeing the screen okay? Yes. So basically, I want to talk to you about um, our experience with deploying COVID-19 terminology um, specifically relevant to ONC standard ontologies. Um, you know, when we first got started with I2B2 um, about five years ago, I would observe that I2 on, I2B2 ontology metadata is difficult to organize, develop, and share. And I thank Matt V for um, you know, that discussion. I think that that discussion needs to occur a lot if you're actually bringing up an I2B2 site. Um, deploying ONC standards is even more difficult because there are multiple publication schemes from the SDOs, the Standards Development Organization, and varying architect data architectures for uh, SNOMED CT, LOINC, and RX norm. And these basically create, be, create barriers to full use and timely deployment of the terminologies in the U.S. domain. Um, we learned very quickly that the UMLS publication of these standards is always incomplete and it's not historically comprehensive, um, which means that metadata that you develop from it um, always leaves out codes, many of which are in existing I2B2 systems. There are lots of codes in our system that can't be found um, in the UMLS uh, publication. Um, some additional challenges relate to uh, what Matt V was describing. Um, basically, the concept dimension allows searching of the, by the C full path um, um, variable um, to uh, navigate to a uh, a piece of I2B2 metadata, and also to support folder searches. Um, that is, um, all of the subtype concepts in the ontology. Um, and to make things more complicated for us, you know, LOINC and RxNorm, neither of them are really ontologies. They've never been published that way. Um, they're not maintained that way. Um, in our GPC network um, in the Midwest, you know, surveying across sites, one thing I noticed was that various versions of these standard ontologies were deployed um, by site. Um, and it's, it's related to the fact that they're expensive to build and maintain and updating them is a real pain in the butt. Um, well, and on top of all of this, COVID-19 added a new urgency um, in terms of getting new terminology additions to those ontologies deployed into I2B2. Um, I mentioned um, earlier that um, some of us are interested in the ontology work group on um, being able to keep um, these ONC ontologies integrated into I2B2 and up to date and current. And I want to describe an architecture that we are developing uh, for sharing with the I2B2 community um, that will also um, respond to Keith Elliston's question because these ontologies would basically be integrated by their design across international boundaries. Um, but that's another discussion. So basically, SNOMED CT publishes uh, their uh, terminology as RF2 data sets. You don't need to know what RF2 is, um, but it's its own unique data format. Reagan Street publishes the LOINC files. Um, the NLM has their RxNav uh, data sets. Um, 
And uh, the good news is that they plan to publish an OWL format later this summer. And the FDA, of course, publishes nothing, and it's, it's like pulling teeth to get anything out of uh, their sites in terms of historical NDC data. Well, in this proposal, we will basically develop semantically integrated and inter interoperable OWL ontologies from all of these data sets using or creating tooling uh, that will be shared with the I2B2 community. This um, integrated OWL ontology, which has a close allegiance, uh, I should say alliance, with the Solar development uh, project that Keith Campbell and, uh, and uh, Stan Huff um, are, are uh, pursuing. Um, we're basically following you know, their ideas, uh, but we'll basically have a product that you can actually see and touch uh, this year. Um, for the ontology work group, we propose that we would have a toolkit of uh, SQL procedures that would drive off of the um, OWL ontologies um, and develop interoperable I2B2 metadata. Um, and the three that we've got on the immediate plate are um, conditions, um, observables, which would include lab and clinical findings, um, and medications. Um, well, this sounds like Jim, sort of it. Jim, we had a question real quick. Um, uh, we'll, after we'll, I'm we'll, done. After okay, I'm you want to wait? Okay. Uh, as soon as I'm done. Um, so in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, this sounds like pie in the sky. And I just want to reflect our experience in the last couple of months relative to COVID. National published um, up, Jim. a number of concepts that um, um, that were relevant to SNOMAD diagnosis. Uh, Blank code coming from Reagan Street. In March, CDC issued guidance on how terms should be used in the U.S. domain. Um, on March 19th, and he agreed to modify their editorial plans to include remdesivir in the Rx norm publication so that we could include it in and then terminology release updates deploy were deployed in the Nebraska lexicon which is our integrated ontology development their discussion and generally would replace the concept dimension that um, Matt V uh, described. Ontology and tested that out, um, and that um, and that worked well. Um, which integrates LOINC and SNOMED CT into the SNOMED CT concept model. Um, and basically all of these tools run within a matter of, um, you know, minutes to hours in terms of response time. So back in um, around the uh, 1st of May, um, you know, we had this uh, Thank you. 
novel coronavirus. Um, so what we've done, we have CT. Um, we expect to be deploying the integrated ontology for LOINC lab here. Jim, we're having trouble hearing your audio. I don't know if your cell phone is right is is right near you. If it's if it's near your computer, you might want to move it. I know you're probably not doing anything to cause this. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I I did move the cell phone away um, earlier, but apologize. Patients. Um, and let's go back. Let's see what time it is. I got time for a question or two. Um, could uh, you read yeah. that to me, please? Yeah. Um, for you, the first one question is, um, will the ontology group be um, using the FAIR principles? Um, FAIR principles are essential for COVID-19 response. Uh, you want to enumerate Carlos. what FAIR principles are? It's uh, openness, you know, are they, is it open? Um, we haven't talked about that at all. If you could uh, elaborate a little bit on how you would see that being incorporated into the ontology. Uh, you yeah, want to Carlos, tell us what? Go ahead. Let me, get, let me see if we can get Carlos to come online and answer, ask the question again. Uh, the FAIR principles, we do put, there is a link there in the window. I guess it's online there. Um, this Q&A? Yeah, it's in Q&A. And, &A. and uh, Carlos, I've unmuted you if you want to. Luis, if you will, Luis, if you will please elaborate on FAIR principles, I'll be glad to respond. Um, I see there was a note, a question from Matt V. Do you have a way to automate the generation of the metadata XML for new LOINC labs? And the answer is yes, um, Matt V, that is the step we're working on right now. Um, that will depend on the uh, testing of the like on OWL build, uh, which we have just generated. This, this is great. I was actually just typing the answer. I'll, I'll, send it, I'll send it in a second, saying that I don't, but uh, it should be fairly easy to modify uh, metadata XML for numeric labs to adapt it to non-numeric. The non-trivial step is mapping the results of the test, which will say something like detected, not detected, or, you know, we dropped the sample on the ground and couldn't test uh, to a standard set of strings like positive, negative, for example. But once you do that, then it's uh, very straightforward. <clears throat> Okay, um, I invited Carlos to come on and ask his question more directly. I don't know if he's there or not, but the fair principles are basically, you know, is, is uh, you know, are the ontologies findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable? Um, I've got that on screen now, are you seeing it? Yeah. Um, and in response okay. to your question, Luis, um, you know, basically, this will be uh, based upon the SNOMED CT concept model, okay, which is a um, international um, um, international publication, um, and so I believe so. The metadata will certainly be richer 
than um, anything we've had in the past because the SNOMED CT concept model um, has much more detail in terms of the conceptualization for each domain. Um, in terms of communication protocols and so forth, you know, frankly, I haven't really looked at that yet. Um, given the fact that we will be using only international uh, data standards, I think that I can say that that would be the case. Um, as you probably know, LOINC and SNOMED CT um, and maybe RxNorm all support multilingual implementations. Um, so I believe that, um, you know, in terms of uh, broadly applicable language, um, I believe so. I think that a complete response to your question, you know, requires a, more analysis on my part, but I think it's yep. fair to say um, that this would push um, I2B2 metadata forward into something that really could uh, support a non US centric um, elap um, um, use of I2B2. And I see that I'm at the end of my time, so I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to Michelle. Um, so I guess I'm supposed to, okay, so I guess I'm supposed to discuss, uh, ACT and the COVID ontology, but I don't want to really go into a lot of detail because we do have a full session on that later today at two o'clock. So I'm just going to quickly go over what we've done. Uh, basically, what we did was, can you hear me? Or does it sound funny? Um, I'm good. Oh, OK. Um, so what we did in the ACT Network is to first build uh, what our phenotype would be for COVID. And we enlisted nine sites, as you've heard over and over, I guess, this seminar. Um, to join the test network and to commit to updating more frequently and to adopting frequent updates to the ontology. So right now we're on version three of the COVID ontology, which we will discuss later in the ACT uh, session, we'll be rolling out to the full network. Um, so we have uh, a couple of different elements that are in this ontology. And I will tell you well, where to go. Oops, go away. Okay, so here's the ontology. Um, basically, what we tried to do is number one, be able to capture any of the new codes that came out as a result of COVID. We decided to, you know, create the individual codes as they came out, which with the real links. But we also decided to have this concept of derived facts and um, put the, uh, the value of the individual lab in as a fact itself as well. So as you can see here, we have, you know, equivocal, negative, pending, and positive. We have those as sub facts to the, the regular fact that would go in during your normal ETL process. And then we also rolled all those facts up into, really these are kind of convenience derived facts, which would allow us to um, quickly be able to say, you know, is it a positive lab or is it a negative lab? Um, oh, this is the old ontology. Uh oh. Um, so <laughs> we uh, so so even though you can't see underneath there, there are all like all of these are embedded into these uh, individual quick, any positive, any negative, any equivocal. The other thing that we tried to do is to um, organize it so that you could take things from our old, you know, all the existing elements in our ontology and we group them in ways that would be more convenient and help users to uh, query and find things 
that they would normally have to hunt and peck all over our standard terminologies with meds, labs, um, drug, I mean, diagnosis and procedures. So you'll see, which is very different from what we've had in ACT to date, you will see these uh, combined concepts where we have um, like severe illness and we will have broken down diagnosis and procedures, um, labs and medications. But if you just pull severe illness, it would be able to help you to quickly see, you know, which of your COVID patients have gone through or are having a difficult time. So these are more mixed ontologies that um, that will allow you to get to things quicker. So most of the terms in here are terms that do exist in our regular ontologies. And so you won't have to do any additional ETL to actually capture these facts. Implementing the ontology will allow you to capture them. We, and we called out some things like critical care, which you know, is embedded very deeply into the CPT structure. Plus, we've gathered a lot of things together. Like if you look at, where is this? No, no not that. Um, where's the, one second. Respiratory therapy management. So elements like this, we have gathered together all kinds of CPTs and ICDs and all different elements to help pull together uh, a way for people to be able to see whether somebody's on ECMO or whether they're on mechanical ventilation. Um, to build, you know, we've kind of built pre built queries for people to help them access the information. Some elements in there are things that we don't have in our standard terminology, like for ventilation, we've included some DRGs. Um, there's some medications that we don't have in our other ontology that we've represented with ATCs or UMLS codes. Um, the reason behind that is so that when they really are in the rest of the ontology, I wouldn't get a collision with um, uh, standard terms that I don't know where they would go right now. So um, I guess that's basically it. Uh, I mean, if you want to learn more about it, uh, again, at two o'clock, we'll be going into detail on how we're rolling this out onto the production network. Um, that's it. Any questions? I can't see. Oh. No, no questions. Yeah, no, right. no question in the chat window yet. Yep. Cool. All right, then that's all I have. Michelle, would you like to uh, introduce um, the um, Red Cap survey um, and uh, lead any discussion on uh, um, input for uh, work uh, work group planning? Yeah, um, Desiree, can you? Um, if I stop sharing, can you throw up the, the survey? It's yes, just- I'll put it, it up now. Yeah, so, um, so in the working group, like Jim said in the beginning, we're trying to figure out like, what should we be tackling? What would be most helpful for the I2B2 Transmart ontology group? Not just um, a little, you know, so, I'm part of ACT, so you know everything I do is kind of ACT centric, but I don't want that to overpower what we're doing in the um, I2B2 in the broader community. So one of the things we've been struggling with is how do we, what do you guys need from us to tackle from a generic sense, not just from an ACT centric sense? And so um, Jim put together a quick survey. I don't, do I see it? I don't see it. Hold on That's one right. second. And it's just a four question survey to get input from the community to figure mm -hmm. out uh, a couple of things. And uh, Michelle. No problem. <laughs> Although I'm running out of hot <laughs> <laughs> Let me. Uh, 
So you could start reading or talking about what the questions are while um, Des is bringing it up. Uh, so Diane, can we expect that that might get pushed to all the uh, all the attendees and the panelists? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. So here it is. So um, let's see if I can just. So Diane, is this what? Can they do this right now or no? They should be able to, and I was, I'm trying to get the, um, get out of this full screen so I can get the, um, the links for you. Stop sharing. Let me grab the links and I will put them in the chat box. <coughs> so, so you'll be able to do this survey. As you can see, the first question was, you know, what types of educational material do you think we should be pulling together? You know, what does the community need for us to create what type of, I won't say documentation because we haven't been all that great at doing that, but uh, we're going to have to give it another try if you want us to. Um, okay, here she goes. So she put the uh, link into the chat box and then she's going to bring it back up. There you go. And then. Sorry. Uh oh, I'm going to start tap dancing again. <laughs> All right. Share. Here we go. Here Full we go. screen. So this will come up as a. Um, a word cloud. The others are just going to be um, open responses. So this is the only one that's a visual. Okay. Okay. So, so the, so one of the things is what type of educational activities do you, should the work group undertake? Do you see that as our role? Is that something that's important to you guys? I, I know Matthew just gave you a quick uh, ontology 101 uh, class. But do you, does the community need more of those types of things so they can create their own individual ontologies for their local sites? Um, I, what, how do I get to the next question? Okay, and then the next question will be, so if everybody can like go to her, the link that she went and then fill those in so that we can get a feel because really we're having a difficult time of figuring out what our, uh, what our priorities are, what would be helpful for the community. Um, so one of the things is like, what ontologies should we support? Uh, right now, a lot of people are using the ACT ontologies, but are there other ontologies that people would like to see us um, build or support um, to push, you know, like Jim has those ONC ontologies you know, provide at a public space where people can download them and import them into their system. Next one. And this is a very generic question. Um, for give us any suggestion that you want us to do. I don't know. And I think what's the last question? I think those two questions are almost the same. So, um, so basically what we're looking for is input from the community to tell us what is important, what they need us to provide. Do they want us to kind of rally around a set of common tools for creating and importing ontologies? Are there ontologies that they would like for us to work on in ontology work group that can then be shared out? Is there training you want us to do? And that's it. Finish it up, Jim. And there's questions. Um, thanks, Michelle. Uh -huh. And um, I see that, you know, we've still got a few minutes left. If um, anybody um, has anything um, to share now, um, otherwise we'll turn the time back over to uh, the agenda. So there are a couple questions in here, Jim. Um, Justin Lancaster says, how are you meshing with DBpedia and other very public tools? 
I am not familiar with DBPedia. Are you, Jim? Yeah, yeah nor am I. Um, so I, I don't know that I could answer that. Obviously, we're not. <laughs> no, I guess maybe we need to look up what DBpedia is and, and <laughs> figure out what that is. Thank you, Justin. We will look into that. And then there was another question. Is the ACT ontology being used by Canadian sites? I think uh, Elliston probably would be the best one to answer that. I don't know if he could take the mic. Can you, Keith? Can Keith talk? Um, I can try to turn him on, turn his mic on. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it looks like he's not here. Oh, he's not there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Are I'm you looking for Keith Elliston. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna unmute. I've just unmuted Keith. Um, oh, where is he? There we go. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm always here lurking. Uh, in terms of it in Canada, uh, they use a number of different medical ontologies in Canada for record capture. And so we've been looking at ways to, to be interactive and try and use ACT as a, a means there. But at this point, um, it's, it, you know, the, it's not been feasible. The other challenge we have in Canada is the dual language requirement. And so um, a lot of people think of language as a sort of an option, but in Canada, uh, you have to have things in both English and French as a legal requirement. And so one of the challenges for us is having um, a French language ontology that's equivalent as well. So in terms of people using ACT, there, no, ACT has turned out to be very, very U.S. -y. But we're looking for ways, I would love to see sort of an international standard uh, ACT type ontology and one that we could translate into different languages as well. I think that would be a fantastic resource. I think one of the things that we want to do, and I think if we look at the 4CE project that, uh, uh, that the foundation and, and Harvard have, have pushed forward, is one of the real challenges is how we're representing um, medical information across language barriers. And uh, I think that's something I'd love to see the ontology working group, Jim, uh, take a look at and see, see what we can do and become more international in our focus. Thanks, Keith. Um, also, there's a question from Russ. Uh, Russ, I unmuted you. Do you want to ask a question or? Oh, just a comment. You know, we talked at the end of oh, yesterday. Yeah. Can you hear me okay, uh, Rudy? Yep, sounds good. Yep. Yeah, we, you know, we just chatted yesterday at the end of yesterday's meeting about kind of uh, pursuing a notes ontology, both from uh, physician or uh, clinician authored notes, as well as uh, free text order results coming back in that are in a note format. So I think that'd be an area we'd be looking to help contribute towards for ACT and for uh, I2B2. Uh, the other area, which is probably harder to standardize, but uh, general flow sheet observations um, might be another area over time that for um, interdisciplinary research may be useful. Thanks. Russ, I would, I would uh, ask you a question back on that, and that is that, um, you know, when you look at notes, they cover a lot of things. Now, are you talking about the classification of notes and the organization of notes? Because if so, Loink, of course, you know, has um, had a working group for a long time on, uh, on note classification. Yes, Jim, we, we commented about, you may have missed it at the very end of yesterday, but um, we're looking to say, could we just implement the Loink um, notes ontology but um, a lot of times, and David Hanauer was uh, commenting as well, um, to fully do the five dimensions of that ontology, a lot of that data is not immediately available in the note itself sometimes. Uh, but just getting started on a couple places coming together to try to think about how we pursue the LOINC ontology uh, and get it available and deployed consistently would be useful. Because right now, we don't have that. Um, so some of it would involve mapping say the epic note title name at first level to one categorization in the link ontology, but then to fully fill it out, you, know, you might need to reference the service and the provider type. Thank you for that, Russ. I'm going to put that item on, ag on the agenda for the next uh, work group meeting. Um, I'll make sure that you're copied um, on that. Yeah, I would say, and Noor Abu El Rub, uh, one of our team members is uh, leading that effort. Roger. 
we are technically at time. Do we want to keep going with questions or should we, should we wrap no, up? No, I questions? think that we're at the end of our time, actually. Yes, we are done. Thank you, everyone. Okay. It's a break, right? Thanks, everyone. Yes, we'll take a 30 minute break and we'll join again at um, 11 o'clock for the ETL working group.